you're watching Power Nation. Today on Carcass, we put the finishing touches on junk mail. We address the last pieces of our interior on our 1978 DJ5. Plus, figure out how we're gonna shift the transmission and transfer case. Then we install our brake lines and head out on the trail to see if our old postal Jeep truly can deliver the goods. Hey everybody, welcome to Carcass. Our Jeep that we're calling Junk Mail has made a huge transformation from the two-wheel drive Jeep that originally rolled into the shop into this four-wheel drive off-road rig. And it all started with a 1978 Postal Jeep that originally had a four-cylinder engine in it. But because we bought three Jeeps, we had the option of putting a six-cylinder in here, along with a custom four-link suspension, one-ton axles, coilover shocks, a roll cage for safety, and some fresh coats of paint. And today is the day that we get to take this thing out, but we got a couple of things that we got to do. We got to wrap up the brakes, install the complete interior, add some shifters, then we're going to throw in the drive shafts, load this thing up, and go have some fun. Let's start on the interior. Sounds good. For our seat situation, we're going to be pretty resourceful. We found a matching pair of seats from the other two Jeeps that we bought, so that's what we'll use. This particular seat is looking pretty weathered, and we do have a way to fix that later. As far as mounting it goes, it's really simple. There are still holes in the floor for the rear part of the bracket, but because we replaced the floor pans, we're gonna have to drill two new holes for the front part, and that's where we'll start. I'll line up the rear brackets with the existing holes so that I can mark the front mounting holes. Once marked, I'll remove the seat and drill the holes using a Matco Hyperstep drill bit. Now I can install the seat and snug it down. Now that Jimmy has the driver's seat installed, it's time for me to hop in and take care of the shifters. For the transmission, we're gonna be running the stock one. For the transfer case, we went to Summit Racing and picked up a KRC shifter. Now, if you guys remember, the original floor had a small little transmission hump in it, and now it's completely flat. So to install this shifter, we gotta make a small little modification. Using a straight edge, I'll mark a line across the bracket. Then I'll use a cutoff wheel to make a relief cut. I'll bend the tab up to 90 degrees. And finish it by welding it up. Back over at the Jeep, we need to cut a hole in the floor for the shifter arm to go through. Now I already went underneath and I found out I got to come over 23 and a half inches and forward about 16 inches. So we're going to put a little mark on the floor and then we'll just get to cutting. With it marked, I'll draw a line to mark the slot we need to cut out. Drill a few holes. and then connect the dots using a Benchmark Abrasives Premium Cutoff Wheel. With our shifter in place, we need to find a way to connect that to the transmission. Now the idea is to use a piece of solid stock, but we can't do it in a straight run because the new transmission cross member we built is in the way. So the plan here is to use a piece of TIG rod, and we're gonna feed it up where it needs to be and add some specific bends to it so we can get our shape. Then, all I need to do is transfer this over to our piece of solid stock on the table. We'll match the bends. We'll come back and do a test fit. Using a piece of 3 8 stock, I'll use my template to mark where my bends should be. Then using a torch, I'll heat up the area to cherry red, place it into the jig, and use a little bit of muscle to make the bend. I'll use the same process on the other end. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's pretty close. See how it fits. All right, let's see how this works. And then from here, if we're right, we can drill some holes, install the shifter. Yeah, that'll work perfectly. With the holes marked, I'll drill them out. Drop in our shifter and tighten it down. Now we can install our linkage for our transmission. All right, let's try this. Reverse, neutral, drive, second, first. Perfect. Now we'll uh, move on to the transfer case. With the location set, we can drill and cut the floor, just like we did with the other shifter. With the shifter body installed, we'll slide underneath the body and bolt up our handle. After a quick test run, it's time to mount the transfer case linkage. All right, shifters are installed and it's time to button up the interior, but before we get onto that, I wanna throw a fresh coat of paint on this one. We'll show you a quick and easy way to update your seats. Plus, install some stopping power for junk mail. With the shifters installed, we also threw in the set of seats that we got from our donor vehicles. And like Jimmy said, these things are a little worse for wear and we wanna put a set of seat covers on them. The only issue was is we had no idea what they originally came out of. But as we were pulling them apart to clean up all the brackets, we noticed on the back of one of these covers was a little Ford insignia and a seven digit part number. Well, armed with that information, we went to the internet and it turns out we have a set of seats from a 1983 Ford Mustang. We took that information and headed over to Covercraft and they confirmed we truly do have Mustang seats. So we ordered up a set of Carhartt style precision fit seat covers and these things should work perfect in junk mail. Carhartt fabric is the perfect choice for protecting our seats from water, mud, grease, oil, and dirt. They're crafted and sewn from the highest quality duck weave water resistant material, which makes it easy to clean and will hold up against anything we can toss its way. It has a classic Carhartt styling and they're made to perfectly fit around our seats. They also have a foam backing for added comfort. These Covercraft Precision Fit Carhartt custom seat covers are perfect if you have children, pets, work in construction, or just love the outdoors. They're great in cold and hot climates as it maintains an even temperature and it comes with a three year warranty. With Jeremy wrapping up the interior, we can move on to the brake system. And it all starts with this master cylinder that we got from Summit Racing and then we can move on to some lines. With our master cylinder installed, we can start bending our lines. It's a good idea to put a few coils in the brake line as this provides some strain relief. The body and chassis can shift relative to one another, which can stress the brake lines. That's looking pretty good. Just gotta connect it to our other brake line. We ordered brake lines from Summit Racing for a Ford truck, which would have a six to eight inch lift. This gives us the extra length we need for our suspension to articulate.
That wraps up the front brakes, so we'll finish the rears, bleed them, we'll be ready to go. If you guys are looking to ditch the air hose and get a little more freedom out of your power tools, then you need to check out Matco Tools full line of Infinium cordless power tools. This is their 3 8 drive 16 volt sealed head ratchet kit. The ratchet is constructed from aluminum and composite glass filled nylon for strength and durability. It has a variable speed throttle control for easy speed control and a built in LED. And it comes with two batteries and a charger. With 65 foot pounds of maximum torque, this 3 8 drive sealed head ratchet from Matco Tools would make a great addition to your toolbox. To make it move, we'll need some drive shafts. Then add a few more components so we can hit the trail. All right, try that, Jimmy. How do the brakes feel? Yeah, that's a good pedal. Perfect. Well, now that the brakes are taken care of, we still got a couple more things we got to do. We got to throw the drive shafts in it, then we're going to install the bump stops, and we'll move on to those limit straps. Now, for our drive shafts, we went to Tom Wood's custom drive shaft so they could build us a set for our Jeep. Now, you guys know we have a fully custom suspension, updated powertrain, and one ton axles. We wanted to make sure we had a set of drive shafts that would hold up to our 37 inch tall tires and the abuse this thing's going to see when it's out on the trails. Now the drive shafts that they sent us utilize a double carden style joint on the transfer case side. What that does is allows us to reach full suspension travel and get all of our articulation out of our drive shafts when we're out on the trails. For the bolts, we're going to be using ARP bolts and we'll add a little bit of thread locker. When measuring for drive shafts, you want to make sure your vehicle is at ride height. Also, you'll need to know what series U-joint fits your pinion, as well as the angle of the drive shaft. All right, let's get the front one in. Sweet. If you roll that in underneath here, we'll pick this up, we'll check for flex, check for binding, and then we can check for the bump stops as well. Let's see how it does. That's good right there, actually. Yeah, that'll work. Go ahead. I'm gonna take a look at the drive shaft. Make sure it doesn't touch anything. Keep going. Keep going, stop there. Okay, so that's about a finger width between the drive shaft and the upper four link mount. That's impressive. Yeah, so I think we're good there to probably take a measurement for the bump. Okay. It's probably safer for you to take that measurement. Yeah. You're on that side. Just see what it reads from the chassis to that axle truss. Uh, like five and a half. Okay. And our bumps are like four and three quarter or something like that. Yeah. Do some math, we'll figure out what we gotta do there. Mm -hmm. We'll build a bracket and we'll get set up. Yeah. Sounds good. You go back down with this just to make it safe. Now watch. Straighten the tire back out. There you go. Perfect, that'll work. The most important part of mounting our bump stop is to mount it close enough to the axle housing so it's functional. So my idea here is to take a piece of quarter inch plate, put a couple bends in it, that way it's offset from the chassis rail. So that starts with cutting our quarter inch piece of plate to length. With our measurement made, I can head over to the iron worker and cut out our piece. then use the horizontal brake to make our bends. I'll do two 45 degree bends on each side and punch some holes for a rosette weld on each end. Back to the fab table, I can drill our mounting hole. Then head over to the chassis to prep the area for welding and install our bracket. Now 
With the bracket fully welded, I'll do one final check before painting it and final install. Now one last thing to go along with our bump stops are limit straps. And one thing to remember is that these things are going to stretch out about an inch over the course of its lifetime per 12 inches of strap. So that's one thing to consider when you guys take your measurements and order these things up. Now what I got to do is install these things and then we're going to go hit the trails. We head to the trails to see if junk mail has first class performance. All right, it's finally time. We're out here at Adventure Off-Road Park. We have almost 600 acres and over 120 trails to choose from. And the trail system here at AOP ranges from anything from mild to wild, stuff like your side-by-sides or your weekend warriors, all the way up to like Project Junk Mail and some rock bouncers. But today is the day we're gonna see if Junk Mail truly can deliver. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm excited. This will be fun. We'll uh, start it off a little easy. This shouldn't be too bad. It should be kind of fun to see how it handles, really. Yeah. The best part is we don't have doors. Right. So we can just stick our heads out. This ain't nothing. No. They can do a lot more than this. Yeah, totally. This is George Winter Trail. Let's run this one. This will be a little tougher. All right. This is one of my favorites up here at the top. I don't think we'll have our work cut out for us, but it's gonna be a little more difficult. Yeah. It's just rocks. I'm using the throttle a little bit, bud. Just crawling. It's like we're not doing anything. No. This thing's doing great. Just let it cruise a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm truly impressed right now. I am too. This thing is great. It's not even struggling. Nope. It's not even struggling. Like we're just cruising away, delivering the mail. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna spot you now. Okay. Then we'll just start placing tires in right spots and then we'll get up this. Not that we need it, we're doing really good, but. Yeah. So hard driver. Okay, like that. Yep. I don't know. What do you think? It's awesome. It's like your first time out. So. Yeah, first time off road, and like it's kind of sketchy, but like addicting at the same time. Cool. I think we should keep going. It's like kind of downhill from here. Yeah. We'll go play one more spot. Yeah, you drive. All right. Yeah. I can you you got to get a feel for I it. I can drive this thing. We're going. Check it out over here. Yeah. Let's let's try it this way once. Looks like we got a little bit of mud. Yeah. Not bad. Try to play around in here. Oh, we're looking on that rock. Yeah, you got room. Oh. Little body. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh, oh, ouch. Oh, that's a little deeper than it looks. Yeah. Still not a problem. Like, no. Let's just walk right through that. No issues. Woo -hoo -hoo. Let's go down yonder, huh? A little bit of mud on these trails. Yeah. Kind of fun. Something different. Oh, 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 oh. A little slippery. <laughs> yeah. We better square back up on that one. That was kind of crazy. That was a little bit, yeah. How about that? Sure. That's an easier way to get around that yeah. one. Life more. gives you lemons. Make lemonade. Yeah. A little more mud. You know what's amazing? What's that? 
And this is the first four link that you or I have ever built. Right. And it's doing pretty, pretty dang good. I wouldn't say we're doing bad by any means. Yeah. I think it's performing like it should. Yep. Oh, another frog. Yeah, I see that frog down yeah. there? Get out the way. Watch out, froggy. We're having a little bit of fun. Yeah, and this thing has really handled everything we've thrown at it. We've gone up some harder trails, some easier ones, mud, right. a little slick rock. Yeah, I think I'm having a blast. Yeah. It's a lot of fun to drive. You know, the bars in the cage ended up being like perfect, exactly where we needed oh, them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nothing else to hold on to up here. Right. Awesome out here though. I'll take it. All day long, I will mm -hmm. take it. You know, the Jeep pretty much did exactly what we wanted it to do. It took us where we needed to go, but mm -hmm. there's a couple things we could improve on. Yeah, I think there's room for some upgrades in certain areas, but like overall, this thing has really proven itself and we've built a pretty gnarly trail rig. Yeah, we got a little bit of daylight left, so I think we should go have some fun. Yeah. If you guys like anything you've seen on the show today, why don't you go to PowerNationTV.com and Jimmy and I will see you next time. And we're going to hit some more trails in the meantime. Yeah, this will be a little bit of fun. I think we got like, you know, five, eight gallons of gas left. Couple hours of daylight. Couple hours of daylight.